A self-repairing robot may sound like something from a Star Wars movie, but it might soon become a reality. Researchers from Nanyang Technological University have found a way to help robots recognize pain or pressure and then heal themselves. It's made possible by embedding artificial intelligence or AI into a network of sensor nodes connected to mini-brains or processing units on the robotic skins. It also enables a robot to detect damage and repair itself with a self-healing ion gel material when there's a minor injury. Now, for a closer look, we're joined by Associate Professor Arindam Basu from Nanyang Technological University to tell us more about this. Uh, Professor, a welcome this evening. Uh, firstly, do tell us more about your self-healing robot and what sets it apart from similar technology that's also being developed elsewhere. Sure. Um, so the devices that we made uh, firstly enable the robot to find out what are harmful sensations by feeling pain. Secondly, these devices, after minor damage, can actually repair themselves. So it's a kind of self-heal. And lastly, uh, instead of having one central brain to process the information, we broke it up into many tiny brains spread out across the body of the robot so that it's more fault tolerant and it can actually react much faster. So Professor Basu, I mean, when you, when you mentioned this idea of the robot sensing pain, I mean, how did you translate the artificial intelligence that was required into, into that, into the actual uh, uh, process of that? Sure. So uh, the devices that we have um, can uh, feel sensations like pressure or uh, temperature, and uh, it can actually sense if it goes beyond a certain threshold so it will give sort of a digital output, like a one or a zero, a one if there's a harmful uh, sensation. And this one or a zero is read by the AI engine and it interprets that as pain. Uh, so it makes it kind of a binary sort of sensation for it, I suppose. Uh, why is it important to develop robots that feel pain? Uh, well, you can think of uh, several reasons. Uh, firstly, if you think about uh, a future where we have robots working with humans, then we would like them to have human-like sensations. So we as humans learn a lot through pain. So robots would also be able to uh, navigate uh, unstructured environments through this sensation. Uh, secondly, with a pain kind of sensation, it can have a reflex action and remove its arm and avoid it from getting hurt or damaged. Mm, fascinating. So what kind of situations, Professor, do you think these ro robots would be best suited for? One of the situations I can clearly think of is uh, disaster scenarios. If you have search and rescue robots uh, going into places uh, where you don't want to send humans, then uh, these robots should be more uh, reliable and this uh, could be enabled. Secondly, in general, any place where uh, robots are working with humans together. I think human-like sensations are useful because humans can interact with the robots in a more natural way. And what do you think, uh, or can your technology be applied onto sort of existing robots? Uh, yes, sure. So the demonstrations that we have shown are actually putting these devices on existing robots and enhancing their uh, feelings by using these devices on top of uh, current uh, sensors. Professor Basu, where are you with your research and the development of, of these self-repairing robots right now? Could it have the potential to be commercialized at any point? Uh, yes, indeed. So we are in talks with uh, several industrial partners and government agencies. Uh, it, we are looking at scaling up the system and also uh, making it a uh, lot more uh, mass manufacturable. So we are looking at potentially a timeline of three to five years when we hope we could have uh, these things really being commercially available. Professor Basu, thank you very much for that. Associate Professor Arindam Basu there from Nanyang Technological University.